All right, hello world, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to keep working on our yet another budgeting app, uh, web application. So, um, we get today we're gonna be really interacting with Played. Um, for now, all we're just gonna do is uh, it's really just um, uh, just to set up basic back end structures for the front end. We will put that most likely in another video, so we can structure everything out. That means we won't be able to test everything t in this video, but hopefully we'll be able to test it um, in next video. Okay, so the first thing I did is so I added a couple lines of code. Uh, one is I added the play URL here. You can add that in your uh, in your settings uh, URLs. So yeah, another budgeting app URLs right there, um, and you can also let's see. This is this is views. So this is the views for the plate API, right? So as you can see, I have a .im file that .im stores your environment variables. And in this case, I have two environment variables set up: plate client ID and plate client secret. Right? That's that. And so then you'll be able to get your client ID and client secret. How do you get them? Um, to uh, to protect my privacy, I'm not going to really demonstrate it, but I will leave a documentation description down below so you can check it out. It's pretty simple. Just register an account for a couple of things, and then you have access to it. Okay. So in here, then what we're going to do is we're going to say this client. So you're going to actually install a new library first. Played. And in here we're going to say we're going to write import played. And then here we're going to say client equals played dot client. Actually, let me make sure I install it right. Not sure if it's IntelliSense or whatever, but here we're going to say client ID. Not sure what's happening here. Okay, so in here we're going to say client ID is played client ID secret is played uh, client secret. And then environment, environment, and here I'm just gonna set it to sandbox. So sandbox for testing, sandbox development both for testing, but development allows you to actually link accounts. Sandbox just allow you to test their demo accounts. Then API version is two thousand nineteen show five nine. Okay. Um, all right, so the first thing here we'll do is we'll say def index So that's uh, where they will actually be able to access and link their uh, bank account and here we're just going to say return render request played API slash index .html, Like that and then next thing we'll do is we'll do a CSRF exempt because with a lot of stuff is going to handle via Ajax request from the front end to the back end. So we just want to disable CSRF token. Uh, for now, we can obviously also add it, but that's going to be slightly complicated. So for now, I'm just going to disable it. So we'll say from Django.views.decorators.csrf import CSRF exempt. Okay, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't have IntelliSense. Whatever. Um, okay. So that's that. 
So the first thing we'll do is we will be creating a uh, link token. Now, what's a link token? Well, a link token is basically it's like it's it's like a played way to handle uh, to give you like an access token, and the access token can help you. Uh, it's okay, so it's not exactly access token, but this can transist uh, where this can you know you can call different APIs in a play server and that's that can give you access token that can access stuff um, but yeah so in here we're just gonna say gonna create the link token uh, do a try response equals client dot link token dot create so in it here we're just gonna say user So client user ID. In here, just gonna say request dot session bracket. Oh, request dot user dot ID. Like that, and then we're gonna write client name. And this doesn't matter. Client name. I just write this. Uh, products played products okay so we're actually going to create a couple more constant variables up here um, so one thing we need to create is played country codes That's gonna be the supported country. And in here, we're just gonna get another environment variables. Uh, we're just gonna do US, and it's gonna be a comma separated string. Um, so right now, just support US, but I believe they support other countries as well, like uh, EU countries, India. There's like a whole list of supported um, nations there. If you want, you can check that out. Um, the products. Really, the only part I'm going to be using is probably just transactions because we want to know uh, what transactions user had completed on this specific account, so we can you know do the budgeting stuff. Um, there's going to be a redirect URI, which doesn't really do much. Set out to none. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's continue with then product. That's just going to be played products, country codes. That's just going to be played country codes, uh, language. We're going to set to English, redirect URI. I set to redirect, play redirect URI. Yep, like that. Um, okay. So then in here we will say return JSON response. So I had to say from jingle.http import JSON JSON response. Like that. Return JSON JSON response. Yeah, it's kinda of annoying. It doesn't have IntelliSense, so I don't know if the input is actually right. Um, but in here, just going to return the response. So this is one of the rare, rarest occasion I will actually be using SDK um, from Play rather than you know handle all the HTTP stuff um, on our own because usually I just don't really want to set up SDK. Sometimes it can be a really annoying to set up. Um, HTTP it's practically guaranteed to work, right? Um, but play is one are really complicated, so I'd rather use SDK rather than you know HTTP raw access, just because of the link token and how it handles the security and stuff like that. And um, as y'all probably know, there's a uh, settlement thing going on with played um, about data security issues. Uh, so you know that's why they kind of take se take security really important right there. Okay, so if we does have a error, then we're just gonna say 
return e. Okay, let's see. There will be a uh, function we're going to implement in a bit, but for now, yeah, for now, I'm just going to leave as it is. Okay, so now once we have this set up, what the heck is wrong with someone? Ooh, okay, wait a minute. Let me double check. Oh, yeah, this whole thing be wrapped in a dictionary. Sorry about that. There we go. Just ended up guys. All right, sweet. Okay, so now once we have that set up, then we can do another CSRF exam. And then we can say get access token. And this is going to utilize sessions. So a public token. I'm going to say request.post bracket public token. And in here, I'm going to do try p equals played credential. Played credential is a model that we'll be creating that basically stores uh, stores a played credential to access a user's account. So we don't have to really keep accessing them. Right? Keep prompting user to give me your access token and do all that stuff. We're going to store the access token in a, in a you know, in a database, and then fetch them, um, yeah, and then fetch them, store the access token to the session. Therefore, we don't have to again prompt the user, keep logging in and syncing their bank account. So that's gonna be that. Let me import the play credential model really quick. I think, yeah, we already made that. So we're gonna say from dot models import play credential. There we go. All right. User equals request a user. Okay. And in here, we're just going to do, do, okay. So let's say request a session bracket access token equals p dot access token. And we can say return JSON response. Error is none. Access token is p dot access token. Okay. And then here can accept play credential that does not exist. Um, and then we can just pass. We don't care about it that much. And then here we can write try. Now what we can do is we can exchange the response with played server equals client dot item dot public token dot exchange the public token. Like that. And accept play dot errors dot play error s e let's see return json response e there you go all right so then here we're just gonna set up a couple sessions into our uh, into our database here or into our session and into database so in here we're going to say request a session bracket access token is equals to exchange response access token item id going to be exchange response so that's another information we want to keep we might want to keep track of and in here you can write play credential dot objects dot create user equals request a user access token equals request us equals I oh, can just copy and paste you like that and then do dot save here we go and then you can just return to some response exchange response there we go. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start to 
um, implement some views that will be able to actually render some informations. For example, uh, we're gonna do info. That's another. That's probably another just set. That's this is another just setup functions. And in here we're just gonna do yeah. This is just for uh, for the front end to get information from the back end here. And in here we can just say try access token equals request session bracket access token. Uh, except so if you know I'm sure let's do this if not request session so actually let's do this so that means if request a session exists the access token exists they're gonna just get the access token uh, otherwise access token will be none and in here can do return JSON response item ID is the item ID access token is the access token and products is played products there we go all right that's that and now in here we can do def get transactions and then that's gonna get the transaction for 60 days. So in here, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to implement another interesting function before we do this actually. You're just gonna implement underscore function, underscore get transactions. So this requires three arguments. We need the access token, of course, that's how we're gonna actually use the data. But if you think about it, we're gonna list the transaction with months and years, right? So we're gonna basically tell the function what months we're gonna want the data and what year we want the data. All right, and in here you can say if not months and not year. And I mean, that I mean if, uh, if uh, both of them does not exist, right, or none, then in here you can just say given date is gonna be this. So we're just gonna say, Import date time, import calendar, import date time, and import, I don't think, oh, calendar exists, okay. So, uh, in here we're gonna do this, and this is probably the last function we're gonna be writing in this video. This is a more complicated one. Uh, in here we're going to say given day is date time dot date time dot today dot date there can be something about server and client issue right now I don't care it's really just a server date server usually is in UTC which is British time zone um, Greenwich, Green, Greenwich I don't know how they say that word but it's in British time zone so that could be a potential issue but for now I don't really care about like exact like hour but that's gonna get whatever server state is. So start date. That's gonna be given date dot replace day equals one. So I yeah, so that will return a okay, let me see. That will return new date with specified field. So that basically will give us a start of the months. That will give us a date at the start of the month. And the end date. It's going to be going to use a string formatting here. Uh, colon. It's really weird stuff now. Uh, percent capital Y dash percent lowercase m dash percent lowercase d. That will give us year, 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 month, dash, month, month, dash, day, date format. And format, and you're going to say date time dot date time dot now. That's going to be the end date. End date is practically just today, right? Because we don't want, uh, I think it might give you an error if the end date is actually passed today, but yeah. Okay, so otherwise, if we do have a specific month or date, now we're just going to say start date is year dash zero. Months 
Uh, okay, I actually realize there might there gonna be some issue if I do twelve. Like if the months is you know more than the, more than um, not like just you know it's like ten. Then I don't want the zero. So you can't say can utilize do this right if months is greater than or equals to ten. Then because the start date is stir months stir day dash for one uh and then else start date's gonna be the same the same format start date's all gonna be the same format the end date is the interesting one because you know sometimes um for example february can be 28 days 29 days Certain months have 30 days, 31 days. So that's what we're going to use a calendar module for. That's going to give us how many days, what, how many days really is in a month. And in here, I can just copy you. Uh, and date. Oh, I guess I can't. I had to. Whoops. Okay, let me. Yeah, we're going to have to do that in each of the if statements here. Or not. In each of the conditions here you know what I mean and in here we have to say stir year um, stir months and then dash calendar the months range and then you can see it returns number of days right return number of days it's gonna be a tuple so you're gonna get the index number one year months index number one like that and then same thing applies here. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, end it here. Zero. Like that. Good. Okay. So now, once you have the date all set up, we can do another try accept. Is it transactions response? Now we're going to interact with plate little clients. Client.transactions.get access token. Start date. And date. Uh, and then we can do accept played dot error dot played error se return JSON response e. Uh, there's actually a format error function we'll define in the next video, and then here we can say return transactions response that's of course going to just be uh, oh actually no I don't want to do that just return e, return e spot so this is going to be an internal function it's not going to be really directly interact with a with a route that's why request is not a arguments here uh, what we really just care about is the access token months in the year which we'll be able to get from the function that we'll be implementing to call it Actually, I think we can finish at least this function, so let's do this. It's pretty simple, just one line or a couple lines. In here, you can say def get transactions uh, not underscore. Now we'll take in request. And then in here, that would take in request. Actually, I need to look at here real quick. Most up to date one. And in here, okay, that's really weird. Wait a minute. Let me double check my code. So in here we're gonna say, okay, what the heck is wrong with it? Uh, okay, so in here we're just gonna say, return JSON response, get transaction access token. Yep, for now just gonna do it like this, and then actually, I'm not sure why this part's not in it. I'm going to get months, get M, months, and the year, 
your is a y minus is the m your is the y there we go okay so that's the back i'm gonna be do, uh, finishing up today uh in this video next video we're gonna uh, finish up the backend functions and for time I'm going to start with the front end function and then we can test the front end views and then we can test everything as a whole. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. If you have any question or comment, feel free to comment down below. As always, stay safe and have a great rest of your day. That was me, out.